Hey everybody, it's your Survivor pal Gordon Holmes here with your exit interview for Survivor 47, episode 3, talking to Asia in just a minute, and ouch. Uh, stab, twist. Ugh. Uh, rough season for podcasters. They're like the new salespeople. Gotta get them out early. Uh, before we get into that, a couple of quick orders of business. First of all, check out my exit, my interview, my episode recaps. That's what I was looking for. Uh, at gordonholmes.substack.com. Immediately following every episode, you'll find a full recap of what I thought happened, uh, as well as individual letter grades for each one of the players. And if you want to support what we do here, that's a great way to do it. Uh, subscribe there. Uh, also, check me out on Twitter uh, at Gordon Holmes. If you enjoy this video, I hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, press that notification bell. Uh, the more people we get in front of, uh, the more fun stuff we can do. Uh, and with that said, let's see what Asia has to say about last night's blindside. Oh. Oh, same. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I know we, get, we need to get into this. Um, first and foremost, what is Rob has a podcast? What is Rob has a podcast? That cool. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So Rob has. A, so I applied uh, 2020 to be a part of the class of 2020 to bring on a new group of podcasters. And yeah, since then I've been talking about big brother survivor. Uh, I do the survivor draft. Well, before getting on the show, I would do the survivor draft every season. And then also just getting to talk about like love shows, like love is blind married at first sight. Uh, it's just such a fun, like, cause by the day I'm an IT consultant, but like, it's such a fun creative outlet in the evenings to just like talk about these shows that I would be talking about anyway with friends, but get to talk about it on a podcast. Now, I assume that everybody who watches me is familiar with Rob has a podcast. If you're not, yeah. it's 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 a a podcast series hosted by Rob Sesternino, who was the 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 smartest player to ever win back in Survivor Amazon. Uh, and I have a little something for you, Asia. Um, in Survivor All Stars, he was voted out at his first tribal council. So just say it. Yeah, uh, we if, he... if 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 you're looking at technicalities, like if you don't count mm -hmm. like Jenna yep. leaving, yep. He, he was also third voted out. So. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. so similar. So you're welcome. If he gives you yeah. any grief, I don't, he's a, he's a wonderful human being. I don't anticipate him doing yeah. that. Um, yeah. So last night, uh, the, the story they told us was that you fought too hard to keep Saul and then uh, Tina, Tini and, and Keyshawn felt like they couldn't trust you. Um, how accurate is that? What was your take on, on what happened uh, last night? Here's the thing. They did not need my vote to get rid of Saul. You want to get, get rid of Saul? Get rid of Saul. You don't need my vote. What does my vote matter? So it's just like, in my perspective, if I didn't know, if I, I didn't know for sure if Rome didn't have an advantage, had an extra vote or still a vote. Those are the options running through my mind. And so I'm thinking, okay, even if y'all have three votes with Genevieve, you could get rid of Saul. Who cares what me and Saul do, right? That's three, two. And so it was kind of like, okay, you have this plan to get rid of Saul, but then you're like, well, let's do this loyalty test on Asia to see if she's willing to get rid of her number one. Whereas Lavo had very clear duos. It was me and Saul, Tina and Keyshawn, and Genevieve and Rome. And so it was kind of like, okay, Tini, if I came to you and said, hey, get rid of get rid of Keyshawn today, what would you have said? Or vice versa. It's just like so weird to put that on me to say, oh, this person that we know that you are clearly with from like a duo's perspective, you're not willing to vote him out. So therefore we're going to vote you out. Mm -hmm. That just made zero sense to me. And it also for them, Keyshawn and Tini to pitch to me, let's get rid of Saul. That shows my position in the game because- they were pitching it to me like, well, if we get rid of Saul, it could be us three against those two. I'm like, well, first of all, you just told me Rome has an idol. He's safe tonight, right? So we know that Genevieve is up for grabs or it should, like you would be able to vote for Genevieve. But then you're saying do Saul because you don't know who Genevieve or who Rome is going to use the idol on. And so if you're willing to get rid of Saul, you're willing to get rid of me, which was clear. Like that's, that's what the case was, but for it for them to have those conversations to be like oh well she was just unwilling to to do exactly what we said why you know what's wrong with her it's just like oh sorry i have a brain that i'm trying to like think for myself and explore these options i have constantly reassured you that i want to work with you Saul, uh, uh you four like it was clear as day out there on a day-to-day -day basis that me, Genevieve, and Rome, and Saul were not ever going to cross paths and work together because it was there was so much personal friction, um, obviously, with the Rome of, of it all, less of the Genevieve, more so Rome. And because Rome and Genevieve were so attached, it just made it impossible to just be like, hey, Genevieve, let's work together. Because she would always tell me, it sucks that our guys just don't get along. And so I'm just like... Okay, well, 
now I need to go all in on Rome. Or I need to go all in on Teeny and Keyshawn. And so it was like, that's really weird that the four that I'm telling you, I'm so locked in on, you're you're going to vote me out because I'm not willing to get rid of our fourth. Like that's, that was just, it just didn't make logical sense to me. You keep mentioning this Genevieve. I'm so, I'm sorry. Who, <laughs> uh, like what? I watched the show a couple times, honestly, come on. I think I would know uh, if there was a Genevieve out there, Asia. <laughs> um, you know, she is the, she is the sixth person on the tribe. She's I, the one that, you know, thought Mimba, Mamba mentality sounded great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, when you first arrived on the beach or it seemed like that, a teeny outed you as somewhat of a survivor expert, a survivor expert, not even somewhat a survivor expert. Um, and, and that might not seem like a big deal, but to me, I'm thinking, you know, cause I'm going to go out, I'm going to be on 49. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't talk about it yet. Um, yeah. but, uh, you know, anybody who watches my stuff, like if you just see me as a human being on the beach, you'd be like, well, he's old. He's not in that great a shape. We don't got to worry about him, but I am a stone cold challenge God. Um, but you wouldn't know that from looking at me, but if you followed my stuff, you wouldn't know that. So once that was out there that Teeny knew so much about you, what were you concerned that maybe she had picked up during the show or how were you able to use that to your advantage? You know, it, it did suck that this information was known by Teeny when we lost, because it was like, okay, now that we've established these pairs, I can't even swallow my pride and try to pitch something to Rome and, and Rome and Genevieve to try to take out like Keyshawn or Teeny because it's like, I, I, at that point of those two, I had the least relationship with Keyshawn. And so I was like, Keyshawn would have been the one that I would try to go for, but it was just impossible because Rome and Genevieve loved Teeny and Keyshawn so much. And it was just like, I did not want to risk Teeny being like, I'm hurt. I'm dropping this information. Cause then that felt detrimental to my game, especially with it could be painted so differently than what it is. Like it's a fun hobby. I have fun talking about these shows. It's not like, oh, I go play different variations of Survivor constantly, <laughs> you know, day day by day. I talk about it like ton, sure. tons of other people. But and having, so that's Having what... watched your, your broadcast, I imagine they would get a feel for the kind of player you would be, like the, the players you respect, the moves you respect, things like that. I feel like that gives them a bit of a, an advantage when they play against you. That's true, which is what made me a little bit weary uh, of, of Teeny's knowledge of this information because Teeny presented it like, I don't want to tell anybody, right? But then it's also like, but do you see it as a threat? I don't know. Like, are you lying to me? Are you just making sure that I'm aware and you're keeping me at a distance because you think like, oh, Asia's going to be, she comes off as very likable on the podcast. That's what she's trying to do here. If anything, I was hoping, because I, I tried to come in and be my authentic self, because that's the last thing I wanted to do was hide. I was already not choosing to disclose that I was a podcaster. And so I was like, if that's the only thing I'm not disclosing, at least I can be myself. But then I wanted Teeny to match that up and be like, this is the same person I'm seeing on the podcast. She's being authentic, right? But then it was also like, I didn't know if Teeny had snuck and told somebody else, even though, you know, like this is this is the game of Survivor. We're playing for a million dollars. So it was just kind of like, oh, OK, I want to be all in on Teeny so you don't drop this information. But for all I know, you already have. So it just made it really tough. And so I just decided to I was like, I have to choose a path. And so I chose to just go all in on Teeny and Keyshawn. Yeah. Was there ever like the opportunity of like, if you guys vote me out? You are not invited to any Rob has a podcast shows ever. <laughs> like, is, is that is that a, a carrot that could have been dangled? Right. The power that I hold. No, no. Oh, you know, it's so. It's it, too nice. You know, it's just too nice. Too nice for Survivor. <laughs> that's what, and, and that's the thing. Like, it takes so much to like get under my skin, and like for me to express that frustration, which is why the whole Rome thing is just it. It that's seeing a different side of myself. I'm like, that's that's a me that I don't. I I don't. I don't think I've seen that side of me, uh, in real life. So then it's just like, no. I think you know, go enjoy. We can be, you know, as cordial as can be. I just need you to understand why that was not a smart move. <laughs> Um, so Rome last night compared himself to Boston Rob, and I, I do think Rome has the potential to be an all-time character. I was thinking he's more like Coach. Um, yeah. If you had to, like, wh where do you think he falls in the in the placement of, like, all-time Survivor characters? Who do you think he's most like? Ooh, all-time Survivor characters. You know, and character is the correct word. Um, I think Rome is thinking of himself. Oh, I didn't say player. Uh, I did not say right. all-time yeah, player. Character. Yeah. I said all-time character. Exactly. I think he's thinking of himself as all-time player, and he needs that clarification that it's all-time character. Um, yeah, I think it's like, yeah, he's the love child of like a JD. 
um, you know, uh, yeah, we, we can say a coach, we can say, um, it, it, it's just so hard. It, it's hard because it's like, he is in a league of his own because of the delusion, uh, which I think was perfectly captured. I was impressed. I think I was like, there are so many moments they could have chosen from, but they summed it up the rapping, the everything, the, 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 Hey, I have to impress y'all at every moment possible. I think that that has been beautifully summed up. And so it just gives you just a taste. I mean, I'm talking, we have an eight ounce steak. You got, you got one ounces of that, but like the reality was just like a, a full course meal. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, the camp, the comparison, look, I love that for him that he thinks that highly of himself. Well, you know, I can rap and I can sing, but I'm not going to brag about it. Uh, I can dance. I'm not going to brag about it during the show. I'm going to let you learn it. Um, we do a, a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name, give you the first word, a couple words that pop into your head. And uh, let's start off with uh, Rome. Delulu. Uh, teeny. Ooh. Likeable. Keyshawn. Unpredictable. Saul. Lovable. I'm going to need your help with this one. <laughs> Gen Gen Genevieve? <laughs> oh, um. Maybe calculate it. Okay. And uh, you spent some time with TK, so let's try TK. Oh, hilarious. Was that excursion cursed? It clearly was. I that's what blew my mind. I was like, well, first of all, someone had to go, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it, and it's so funny to just imagine a world like, okay, let's say we pick two different other people. Could, would it have been those two that were the second and third boot? I don't know. It's just the I I don't because then I think back. I'm like, I think back on should I've gone and also what would have happened if I had won? If I had won, would they have been more thankful that I brought the camp supplies back and maybe that would have changed things? Or was it that, oh, because I didn't get those first few hours of the hi, my name is, uh, did that art set me back? But I felt like I had made enough ground when I came back with the social relationships that I was like, okay, maybe it was just that I didn't win. But then I'm like, no, TK won and that didn't help him at all. Yeah, I, I've always said Survivor's easy from your couch, right? It's Absolutely. easy. Oh, they should do like, you, you don't, you're not starving. You're not, I think paranoia is one of the great things people don't appreciate that, that happens out there. Uh, now yes. that you've lived it, um, how, how would you describe it as being different from the people who've just been watching it, enjoying it all these years? Ooh, yes, paranoia is key. Um, but I will say what is different is a lot of things seem so obvious back at home. I think one thing I've been seeing online is, why didn't they just do two, two, two? Well, for one, we were planning against, well, I personally, when I'm thinking through like, what was the, op what were the options? I'm like, I don't know if we're working with seven votes, we're working with six votes, or is Rome working with two votes? And, you know, uh, and then there's four other votes. Uh, so then, so trying to plan against that was difficult. Um, also, don't, it, people should not underestimate your cognitive ability out there when you have been only eating coconut for seven days, um, coconut and, you know, goldfish. Um, so I think it's very, very, very difficult to, um, to think through things, to think through, okay, this is what logically will happen. I, I even told myself when I was going out there, I said, I need every night, I need to go through where the camp is like, like what the tribe dynamics are, what options I have. And it's just like, you're so exhausted at the end of each day of just being in the sun all day. You got to remember when you're like, I, I don't. I don't think people can underestimate not being able to like go inside for just some brief relief. Like, no, we're outside in the Fijian sun that entire time. There's no break from it. You're doing these hard challenges. We are not playing like uh, tossing rings on a, on a, on bottles. We are carrying these heavy things. We're doing these puzzles that are so yeah. hard. Asia, it's just I'm, like... I'm getting I'm getting the hook here. So I just gotta say you're a rock star. You represented thank us you. fantastically. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.